All right, in part one, we created a lower third super that had auto follow turned on, okay? And it allowed you to animate. And just to show you, just to recap a little bit, you can see if I right click on here and use the auto follow, if these are checked, this is the trick to all of this, if these are checked, this animation won't work anymore. You can see that it, the bar stays in place because the bar is actually locked. These three elements are locked to that text. So again, by simply turning that off and not having them locked, I can now animate that bar. Okay, the other thing that we did is I created a, a, an update out that basically took this bar, took it right off the screen, and then brought the new one on after that. But let's take this a little step further. Let's create a different kind of update so that when the text changes from this text to maybe a longer text or a shorter text, this bar and this red chip actually inherit the state of this one and just move to the new position. So we're just going to go through that and just show, show you how easy that is. And again, on uh, message number 10 here, you'll see, and I'll just do this, I'll play this to my virtual frame buffer. If I play that to the output, and now I type in some longer text like this, and play this to the output, the bar actually changes. And then if I go back, it adjusts itself. And so that's the idea behind this tutorial, which is part two uh, in continuation of the lower third bar. All right, so how are we going to do that? So let's go to scene number seven, uh, which was the basically the finished product before. And we're going to use this one. We might as well start with this one. I'm going to record this to message number 11. And the update out, we don't need any of these in the update out. So let's get rid of those. The only thing that I need in the update out, believe it or not, is this group text. So we'll add that. And I'm just going to do a very quick, maybe five or six frame fade out. Okay, so we'll come back to the start, make sure it's at 100. And so basically, it's a very quick fade out. That's all I need in the update out. Now we'll go to the update in, and we're going to get rid of this in the update in. Okay, so in the update in, what I need now is this, this, and this. We're going to add that to the scene. And we're going to add the group text because obviously we want the text to fade up. So the text fades out very quickly there. So let's let's say at frame three or so, we'll take that text and fade it up on the update in. So we'll start with it off. And we'll do again a very quick one, maybe eight frames or let's make it 10 frames fade it up and again this one fades down so let's go to this one and just fade it up but fade it up after the fact so let's let's say go down to frame 5 we'll go into the transition properties and click hold frame okay so now on the update in if we come down to here and we click on Inherit State, Inherit State, Inherit State. And let's re-record that to message number 12. Now just to make sure that this all works, let's give this a name. We'll call it Lower Third. And the inherit state, we can say from node to which node. So just again, to make, to make it foolproof, let's go from white bar
which is the name of that node, from which scene, lower third, and that's also the name, and we do this to all three of them. So from node, red, chip, right, name, from scene, lower third, and that's also the name, and the last one is the text mask from the name, from scene, lower third, and also name. Now you're thinking that we have to put some animation on that. Actually, we don't have to put any animation on any one of these. We can. Put, this is where this timing comes in. So we can say uh, a fixed timing of, let's say, one second. The problem with that is if the bar has to go only a short distance, it's going to take one second. Or if it has to go a long distance, it's going to take one second, which might look kind of funny. So if it's kind of the same distance all the time, one second might work. And so you could do the one second and make it very easy. Or you can say, no, I want to say pixels per second. I want to put a number in here so it doesn't matter if it has to go a thousand pixels or 20 pixels. It actually goes uh, the same speed. And I've done some tests with this and I actually put in 3,500 pixels per second. So I've done it to the mask. So if I set the pixels per second at 3,500 for the mask, come to the red chip, we'll do the same thing there, 3,500. And for the white bar, so all three of them have to be exactly the same. And I re-record this message. So let's call it up. And we'll put it on the screen. Chiron Hago Lyric Training. And I play this one you can see that the bar actually moves. So if I type in this one, Hegel, it's a shorter bar, and it actually moves. So very quickly you can take the auto follow using inherit state and actually have a very nice looking update in and update move uh, where the bar actually grows to the one that's on the output.